as well to like separate this vod out super quick. Very, very nicely done. Right, let's get this show started. Welcome to Overwatch and welcome to another episode of Probing the Many. This time we're going to be talking about Cloud9 and Team Giganti, Team Giganti. Either way, um, yeah, pretty fucking good match between these two that was played out earlier on today. Uh, I was really excited to see sort of how it went and how these two teams sort of st uh, stacked up against each other. Some really nicely executed dive coming out of Nevix and Mikey and some, some interesting, and well, you can definitely see and feel sort of some of the themes that we've been talking about previously. Uh, Tracers in particular doing a lot of work. Um, some tactics that are sort of in vogue at the moment as well being used on King's Row, for example. So it was all fun to see some of this sort of come out. So... Spoiler, one of them wins, yes. One of them does win. It's a close series. It's a really close series overall. So there we go. Let's let's mute the lovely Bren and ZP. With, with a very interesting cast out of them. I'll, I'll call the cast interesting. A bit atypical at times, but... Let me keep it light and fluffy. Let's... Make sure that we are in 720... And in full quality. Alright, so... This is set the scene. Basically, these two teams, uh, I think they both actually still have a shot on going through. Giganti's been doing pretty well lately. Giganti is, um, has a lot of fins, basically, on the team. Uh, three of these players, especially, are, like, super veterans of the scene. Davin is also a pretty big veteran of the scene. I'm not too sure about Shaz and Big Goose, unfortunately, not without double-checking it. Lynx has been playing for absolutely ages. Fraggy on the Reinhardt. Fraggy has a notorious reputation, um, just, again, to build the story for you guys. Fraggy has this reputation as a, among the Reinhardt players of basically he likes charging he likes charging stuff he he goes for it and he often gets results he's widely considered one of the best aggressive reinhardts in the world and should be respected for it you should always assume that if for, you know if there's an instance where you're wondering will fraggy take the charge he's probably going to take the charge um meanwhile cloud nine undergone some changes very recently changed up a lot of their players sort of swapping people in and out right now playing with mikey team uk's fucking rising star um wales gift to esports mikey a mge mike nevix another longtime veteran of the scene uh repping the doom for space i think um relatively new meows has been around for ages neptuno around for absolutely ages a lucio player pretty solid shot caller um it was actually quite funny we actually played with neptuno for some of the scrims we did in team uk because we had to fill um you know we i think reels was busy that day or gone that day so we had to get someone else and we got neptuno in apparently he lives on gibraltar so who knows maybe i don't think he might actually have a british passport as well we might have actually been able to use him who knows i think he was playing for Port was, no i think he was playing for spain actually or portugal i can't remember uh and gray who has been around for a while as well. All right, let's see. Otherwise, Control Center, like, what's nice about this game is we have two very, very different styles of play. You know, we, we have the, the hit scan Zarya. This is going to become more Vogue as the next patch rolls out because these guys are still playing, not on the patch, like, not on the current patch that we're on. They're playing on the patch before. So they're not playing on the Rodog changes, Junkrat changes. Uh, and this is, they're playing on the patch where Zarya got buffed and they're playing on the patch where Doomfist was released, basically. Or, yeah, this is the Doomfist release patch or is this the Doomfist slightly nerfed patch? Is Doomfist slightly nerfed on this patch? I don't know. I'm actually not 100% sure. It doesn't really make a huge difference here. Very, very different approaches. What's nice about Giganti is they can really just sort of um, take a, like they just take this space super aggressively and then they can just stay here and as long as no one gets picked off by Nevix, they're actually in a really nice position um, because this team can easily poke the shit out of this team. And so they just take this space aggressively, just hold the high ground and just stay on it and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. And shoot. Very, very intelligent playing around the team comp. The Cloud9 are basically completely relying on Nevix to get something done. Nevix gets something done in that he catches a rocket and he dies. Nicely done by Linkser. Linkser, notoriously good hit scan player. Uh, notorious, pretty fucking good Genji as well. Um, Linkser has occupied many roles on many teams and is generally a player to look out for. Like... He is someone who can step up to the plate and carry, usually. So, keep your eye out for Nevix. Uh, not for Nevix, for Linkser. Nevix is also similar category, very flexible. Not quite as strong, I would say, overall. Without double-checking the stats. 
So otherwise Cloud9 are going to have to try and find some way of getting a pick, some way of getting an opening. Notice that Nevix has swapped off from the um, the Doomfist, seeing that there's a Zarya and a Soldier. That's going to really fucking slow out down what he's able to do. And if it doesn't work on the first push, it's usually okay to swap it. Mikey going to be looking for the flank, trying to bully Fraggy. Very, very nicely done. Like, this is part of why Reinhardt dropped out of Vogue for a while, and the pro scene especially, he sort of dropped like a stone. It's stuff like this, where they just put a little bit of pressure on Fraggy, Mikey sees the opportunity, goes in, bomb. Dash comes through from Nevix, and like, this is actually really a nice synergy between these two, Mikey and Nevix. They seem to, like, and this is something that we're going to be watching throughout all of this, Mikey and Nevix really seem to do a good job of just synergizing throughout. Um, Zappis, now with an orb. Mikey backs away a little bit, oh, Mikey backs away because there's a visor, makes sense. About to say, Mikey, interesting choice by Mikey to ba uh, back away on a discorded Zarya, but the visor went off. Like, I've got the sound down very low because I don't want to, you know, talk over the casters too much. Um, or try and wrestle you guys' ears with the casters so I didn't hear it, but hey. It's a good job from Giganti, though. Very, like, very, very simple use of resources. On both sides, currently, economic advantage definitely in the favor of Giganti. Giganti just needs to sort of keep this pressure up and it should be fine. How do teams practice for tournaments on old, uh, old patches? I imagine all the teams and contenders have access to this. And I imagine maybe a lot of pro teams have access to this patch in some form or another, so they, could, they can log onto the server. I imagine... Gibraltar will have a British passport. I think Natuno has one, actually. I'm not sure. I remember asking him. Like, just in case we might need a player. Again, the dive. Let's see what set this, uh, sets this dive up. So we're keeping an eye on the supports. Winston goes in. Nevix is in there, I'm assuming. Mikey's in there. Classic dive. Isolate Shaz. Dive super hard. Really nice. Fraggy does get an Earth Shadow, which is pretty fucking solid. Does manage to kill Mikey, but that's it. Like, that is textbook dive. That is just textbook clean dive. The only thing they've got to contest with now is a high charge Zappis, which is pretty fucking scary. Not gonna lie. Uh, but it's manageable. Let's put it that way. Fraggy. Goes for it, doesn't manage to get it. Now they're starting to use ults to keep it going though, and this is sort of where it gets worrying, because Giganti can now just try and force this to 99%. If they can get it to 99%, then I'd say that's worth it. If it flips now, like if anyone just stands on the point, C9, hello, question mark, um, and they flip the point, yeah, now that they flip the point, those ults were actually slightly wasteful, I'd say. Using the trance to stabilize, I think is okay. But I do want to have a look at this. Like, there is a difference between 99% and anything else, which is that if you flip over to 99%, sometimes the game just fucking ends. And that's pretty huge. And so by committing, like, this resource... Big Goose. When did you commit Sound Barrier? You committed it after Shaz went down. That's okay. Like, I think that's fine. So Shaz goes down, Big Goose ults. Unfortunately, Linkster still gets killed off during that time, which is unfortunate, but I think it's a... Uh, I think that sound barrier is okay. Like, you you just try and see and go for it. Um, there's no point conceding that fight just yet. But unfortunately, Linkster going down just means there's not enough damage. Zappis is the only source of damage left, and it's just not quite enough when you're dealing with two very agile divers. And a triple DBS comp as well, just slamming damage out. Like, space being on the soldier is going to cause so much problem. Um, yeah. And then that ult just seems a bit superfluous, I guess. Like, they needed to just fight on the point a little bit more, but Space commits the visor, and that's just going to clean everything up. Because this is a problem now for Giganti, because basically, um, they they did manage to get Grey to use his ultimate, which is okay. Like, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty fucking solid. Um, because that means that the like, the economy here between the supports is equalized, but the big difference is, like, Lynx has almost got an ult going, but Nevix... He's going to have a Dragon Blade up and running first. So the next team fight, he knows there's no um, Earth Shadow to worry about because Fraggy used it earlier. He knows that there's no support ultimates on the field. Next fight should very, very easily be Cloud Nines with a Dragon Blade. Uh, that's all they're going to have to do. So yeah, there goes Grey using his ult. And then let's see. And so Zappis is swapping off the Zarya. This makes perfect sense. You want to be on the um, D.Va. It will stop your Zenyatta dying quite so much. Isn't Cloud9 the London team? Yes, it is. 
Again, this is why Reinhardt fell out. No, Fraggy's going in, Fraggy's going in, Fraggy's going in, he's going in, he's alone. Dive on the back line. The Winston pulls the attention, creates space. Mikey gets a kill on Fraggy. Nevix is going to go in for the back line. Start killing everything. Like I said, one team fight. And there we go. That's all they needed. And the problem that um, Giganti faces, they're going to have to try and push in with just a, uh, a visor. The problem with just a visor is that Winston alone can sort of counter it. And so Fraggy's swapping up now as well to help deal with this Winston, uh, to help deal with the Genji. And help put pressure on anything trying to dive in too hard or maybe try and create some counter dive for their own. This is more of a, like, this is more of the Korean comp. Or North American comp as well. North Americans tend to play it a lot. Europeans tend to play more. Um, not so much with the soldier, usually with a diva instead. Good bomb by BDD. Big Dick Davin. Transcendence comes out. What happened to Linksa? Where did Linksa go during all of this? So Linksa goes in, visors, takes a shit ton of damage from something and gets killed. Like This is why just visoring is always a little bit dicey. And always a little bit scary because it's not like a clear-cut win. It's very easy for a pro-level team to just tunnel the soldier and just kill him, basically. And Davin doing a shit ton of work on that tracer. And so this is done for Cloud9, but Cloud9 know that they can go into the next fight, have two support ultimates and a visor and almost a dragon blade. Like, economically, I think Cloud9 feel okay like the meows is sort of uh Miles is throwing a little bit here i think actually and 596 and he touches a little bit too early i guess he's worried about getting knocked off it and not being out of touch this is definitely a big commitment though space gets into a good angle cloud nine need to basically play for the point here just push them off Cloud9 should be looking to sort of just take all this territory. If they can make it hard for Giganti to get back on the point then, and they flip it, Cloud9 can then play a lot safer and play a lot slower and sort of just take the time with this. If they can't get them off the point, then they're in trouble. And apparently, oh, apparently they overlap support alts. Watching the supports? Yeah, fucking hell. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's such a... Like, I wasn't even looking for stacked support alts because it's such a stupid mistake to make at a time like this. It literally, to fix this problem, when preparing for the next push, the two supports, and the Lucio who's calling, who's usually calling this stuff, will just go, okay, we engage with sound barrier and then transcendence. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Literally all it takes. It's one fucking stop. One step this is like it's a good sign of when a team is crumbling under pressure a bit and how clean the communications are how well they deal with situations that are intense and quick if they aren't disciplined and if they aren't i don't know if they don't prioritize the right things and stuff like this happens where the communication just never seems to happen and then you end up losing and then hey c9 and yeah, the, the cast is, you know, are trying not to go for the low-hanging fruit. I'm not above it. Space visors, clear space. A, one of my favorite things to do in Overwatch is clear space. Oh, that single sound barrier count as two support ultimates. People fighting all over the place. Overtime is literally just ticking down, ticking down, ticking down, ticking down, ticking down, ticking down. C9, lol. C9, lol. It's not even the same C9 No, but it's, it's a curse. It's a side effect of dive. It is a side effect of dive because dive doesn't like standing in the same spot for ages and just like sitting on the point. But yeah, that that hurts. Okay, team now the team's running dive into dive mirror comps. Not a surprise for night market. There's a couple of different approaches, a couple of different rollouts you can take for first point night market, uh, for first fight night market rather. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they go for. 
how much space do they dare take, basically? How ballsy are these teams feeling? Sometimes, and so it looks like Gigante is going um, just to take the courtyard area. And so basically what you end up doing is you try and fight around here, and you try and fight from in here, and then when the enemy team tries to dive and push for your supports, you whip in very quickly and you take out theirs. So you have like this, almost like a rotation where, you know, these guys go this way and then come back out this way. And you sort of bypass each other and try and work as quickly as possible. The nice part about this, though, is it's very easy to transition into fighting on the point, if you need to. Cloud9 don't take the bait, they go and dislodge them from the courtyard, so that's forced Team Gigante into the back foot, and this is actually really bad, for, I'd say, for Gigante. They have to be very careful. Cloud9 just have to basically play it calm here, poke them out, and then just prioritize on trying to get a kill, but they have positional advantage right now, they can just move on to the point if they need to. Meows are getting focused, but Nevix gets first blood. Good job, Nevix. Nevix pays for it, unfortunately. But the Divas D-Max as well. Now it should be open season for Mikey, especially. Okay, Big Goose got the boot there. I was about to be very disappointed. Unfortunately, one team has a Diva, one team doesn't. Basically, Cloud9 can take this slow and just... They want to extend the fight for as long as possible because that defense matrix absorbs so much damage that Mikey can just kind of do what he wants here and do shitloads of damage. So can the Zen, um, Grey. They can both just kill everything. So you can see Cloud9 can never really advance because they're just taking so much damage every time they poke their nose out that they have to back up, wait, regroup, and get back together. Some good kills coming out of Davin, though. This is why Davin is considered a rising star. Um, he's been doing work. Forces out an early sound barrier as well just to try and maintain the point. It's a good bomb from Mikey, but... I think it's too little too late here. Diva Bomb also goes on to contest the point. It's not really going to do too much. They do manage to get Sha... Uh, yeah, Sha has to use the barrier. Uh, not the barrier, the... <laughs> tired, clearly. The Transcendence, which is actually pretty huge. Nevix commits Dragon Blade to this. I don't like that at all. Again, this this is a lack of... Dis like... Nevix. Nevix. What, what were you expecting to happen here? What? This isn't the ladder. Come on, man. Discipline. Discipline! Because what's annoying about that is next fight, next push, they can just go try and focus down Big Goose because they saw that Shares used Transcendence so they can go and put pressure on the Lucio or try and blow up the Zen, but just go and pressure the Lucio. Uh, they can even just dive the Lucio with the Dragon Blade and kill him before he even touches the floor. Uh, stop the sound barrier and then just win the fight off the back of that. Now they are fighting from a clear deficit and they're going to have a real fucking hard time doing it because Linksa has his Dragon Blade and that's going to end the team fight. Cloud9 forced their way in using Transcendence. Lynx is just going to wait. Here comes the Blade. One. Trying to get rid of the Diva as well. Sure, why not? And done. Clean, easy for Gigante. Like... That was all lack of discipline from Cloud9, all lack of planning, I guess, and lack of shot calling, and lack of awareness that there's no point in losing one fight just to lose the next as well. Like, you've got to be so careful with the resources you spend in Overwatch, and if you don't play that carefully, then you're going to pay for it in a really, really big way. Okay, let's see. So if your boy Michael Adams gets a good possible, I mean that agent of chaos, right? Tracer can always upset things. Looks like Davin's just throwing his. Um, the big thing as well here is that now Cloud9 is going to be playing uphill. Giganti can just keep the ultimate economy taking over and it will work in their favor. They really actually are riding on Mikey to find something. Love to struck, looks for something, gets something. Dapis almost gets demacked immediately, not quite. Bit of a wasted pulse bomb from Mikey, unfortunately. Does manage to get the demac eventually. And Dragon Blade's right into a trance. Again, this is just bad alt tracking. This is just bad keeping track of who's been using what and in what fights. Um, Nevix is just a little bit too eager to just pull it out. He needs to, to be a little bit more calm about this. And this is really costing Cloud9. Like, this is really costing Cloud9. They've just committed a sound barrier to this fight as well. A fight that they are still not really winning just yet, and now they're starting to take over. 
Big Goose might be able to just flip this back though, as long as everyone doesn't die. People are actually in a really shit position for some reason though. Big Goose is completely isolated, trying to get back in. Doesn't commit the ultimate. There's no real need to. They can just go and win the next fight. 98%. So this is Discipline from Giganti. Again, this is sort of experience, I guess, maybe, coming out. Where they don't commit resources, where they don't need it. Like, once they're here as well, this is just a really shit position to be in. Because they're just all being forced into a corner. Any one of them could die at any moment. Diva gets demacked and that fight is done. Like, this, now it's time to stop. Big Goose doesn't use his ultimate. And that's a huge advantage to Giganti, because next push they can come in with the barrier, they can come in with a dragon blade, and they could probably just try and win off the back of that. The only thing they have to be really careful about is Space can just drop a... Yeah, Space can just drop a self-destruct, and that will put a stop to that push. The next push. Dive going very deep for Giganti, gets Grey's ultimate, that's fucking enormous as well. Giganti can just rest back. Linkser is licking his chops at the moment. Linkser is thinking, oh fucking hell, I can, I can win this game here and now. Draws the Dragon Blade, has Sound Barrier on him, let's see what he gets. This is the wrong Genji camera guy, Linkser gets one, gets Niptuno, who has the ultimate in storage, gets Grey. Looking real fucking great right now, Mikey does eventually bring him down. Both supports are now dead for Cloud9. And yet Mikey is carrying, because Mikey is a fucking god. This is, this is why we, we brought Mikey on Team UK. Kappa. And that's a fight that they shouldn't have won, but they won it. And this is why this game was so kind of interesting to me. Because it's just like, Giganti had fucking all the advantages in the world. And yet... Sort of the knock-on effect of this kill just fucking reverberates through this entire fight, right? Mikey beats Davin. And so Linkser then commits, gets Neptuno, gets Grey, and then pays the price for it by dying. Both DPS now dead, both supports dead. And then you're literally relying on the Nebix mikey combo. He gets something done, Mikey gets a good bomb to demet the D.Va. And while Nebix is occupying attention and not dying, uh, Malzaza and Space and Mikey are just fucking cleaning up. Like, the DPS from Cloud9, this mikey Nevix combo, fucking does work. And this is why, what, like, this is why I enjoy watching this series so much, because Nevix and Mikey just seem to have an instant chemistry. Um, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't perfect at all, but it was, like, it was surprisingly good for a team that, you know, Mikey is a sub on this team, I believe. I don't think he's a permanent addition or anything. And yet Mikey and Nevix looked so fucking solid here. And now because Giganti didn't win that fight where they committed a bunch of resources, it means that Cloud9 have a bunch of resources for the next fight, which means that they can hold on to this point and suddenly it's it's looking like a real series. It's looking like an actual match. Oh. Cloud9 don't Cloud9 this time. Ah. Uh. Custers, I think Custers are now arguing whether or not ZP has his trousers up. It's it, an interesting dynamic between ZP and Bren. It's a very interesting dynamic. It is entertaining though. That's that's what I'll give them. It's an interesting dynamic, but an entertaining one. Okay. Uh, very interesting little garden round. Garden is again a map where. A huge number of different ways you, you can play it. Both teams probably going to be playing more of a poke style mirror matchup on both sides, both favoring, favoring the Soldier 76 and the Diva. No pharmacies, no nothing special. Again, thing to watch here: Fraggy and Malzaza. Uh, where they're going to go? Looks like both teams just going to contest the pillar, fighting over the pillar. Very nice early win here as Fraggy jumps out as well. Malzasa can just stay in for a bit longer. They can occupy the space. This is actually very, very nice for Cloud9. Cloud9 want to basically be fighting in this area because it's easy to keep the enemy team pinned in here. It means that Mikey can sort of play around here. He can even go back here if he really wants now. Um, and especially because Davin has been sort of isolated, the, the danger of this positioning is if the Tracix sort of comes in from the side. 
Uh, so from this pathway over here, the Tracer can uh, kind of get onto the back line somewhat easily. But that's not happening at the moment as Davin's forced back, Fraggy's forced back. This is going to set Nevix up in a nice position where he can just sort of lay down a huge amount of covering fire. Still no first blood yet though, but the, again the nice thing is Nevix is in position where he can drop this heal field. So this is just all healing, this is all just these guys being rooted in this position. Already has a fucking visor. Linksa falls off the map, and that is going to be that. And this is all I'd say off the back of Fraggy jumping out. Oop, bit too far back. Like, this entire first fight dictates a huge amount as well. Fraggy gets Discord in and just like panics and jumps out. It's kind of strange. Like, I, I don't understand what pushed him out. Like, they both drop their bubbles at the same time. Fucking Cloud9's bubble goes down first, even. And he just leaves. While Malzaza just stays put. He does eventually sort of have to back out, but he just stays put that little bit longer. Soldier 76 just tucks in underneath him. And now Nevix is in a way better position than Linkser is. And can just rain damage out non-stop. Both Winston's come back in, but hey, one of them has fucking Soldier 76 healing to fall back on. And then they can just hold this middle ground. Nevix does so much damage. You can see, just compare the ultimate charges. Nevix has done way more already. Well, he's done uh, a third more. And then it's just an easy push out. Lynx uh, falls off the map in panic, and there we go. Lynx are throwing, yeah. Lynx has some really fucking good uh, Steam emote, Steam Twitch emotes, by the way. I was merging the platform stream and Twitch and Steam all at once and managed to confuse myself. Congratulations, me. Well done, me. This is a beautiful start for Cloud9, though. Um, as it's actually still relatively ugh. like it's going to be tricky. Just looking at the ultimates. The thing is, like, attacking is much harder than defending on these maps. So Gigante are going to have to get something done. They're really going to have to play heavily around what Linksa can do with the visor. And so this is kind of typical. This is huge. So they burn the D.Va. <gasps> Mikey, you got... Oh my god. So space is getting burned, space is getting burned, space is getting burned. Uh, Gigante know that if space goes down, Linksa has free reign. Devin goes in, dives in, gets rid of um, space on the mech. Linksa commits to the visor, Mikey blinks in. Bomb! Linksa backs into it. What a fucking god! What a fucking god! Because now, now the fight's equalized, right? Now there's, there's no attack visor advantage on either side. Mikey is playing this fucking hard out at the moment. Interesting choice going back for the Winston. Maybe someone was calling it for him to go in the Winston instead of putting pressure on the Zen and keeping the Zen peeled back. The dangerous, now Zen has sort of free farm. Oh no. There we go. Unfortunately, it doesn't go Cloud9's way still. Just the damage was already done. Feels bad, man, but oh! Mikey almost won it there. Like purely on the back of the tracer. So now basically, you know, we're, we're alternating soldier ults here. Now it's Nevix's turn to try and get something done. Davin whiffs the pulse bomb. Okay. Happens. Natuno a little bit far forward. Diva bomb gonna just isolate these guys out. Forces the trance, which is pretty good. Pressure going onto the Diva. Sound barrier goes up. Ooh! Hoo -hoo -hoo. Fucking hell, that boot was close. Counter Diva Bomb doesn't get anything, but does create a lot of space. We've got fights fucking everywhere. Welcome to Dive Meta. That's why it's so exciting. It's because everyone is just fighting everyone. Mikey versus Davin. Mikey is so low, though. Does get healed up. Does get picked up in time. They will take the point. Oh. This, again, this is why fucking... This is why I think pros in general tend to... Some of them at least like Dive Meta. I imagine the Tracer players especially like Dive Meta because it does feel very skill-based. Like, the bomb... I think the bomb is fine. The bomb here seems fine. 
Like, it lands in a good spot. I think it detonates literally when it's here. It might not, actually. It might... Uh, let's... It might detonate just behind the wall. No, these guys are just out of range. They're okay. Force is the trance. Hey, okay. Like, Diva Bomb for a Transcendence is pretty good. She's back in the mech. Soundbarrier goes up, keeps everyone alive. Nebix can't ult just yet. They spot something behind them. Uh, I'm guessing Linksa uh, dove behind them. So Nevix goes for a visor to try and kill Linksa. Does kill Linksa. Counter Diva Bomb gets uh, gets thrown in. Creates a shitload of space for Nevix to move into. Nevix can freely do kind of what he likes at the moment. They hunt down... Um, Winston's hunting down targets. Fraggy does get burned down. Mikey's just free to clean up. What's Davin doing during all this time? This is my question. That and I think the difference here is the soldier is just like Lynx has swapped off soldier and has gone on to Genji. But I don't think Davin and Lynx are quite have the same... I don't know, they don't have the same die focus. Nevix fucking slams in the side with a rocket as well. Like, I don't know, there was an opportunity there when that diva bomb went out for them to isolate the Lucio or isolate something. Davin and Lynx are and they didn't manage to do it. It's just like Lynx went in and was completely on his own and Davin wasn't there with him. And so Nevix then just got a ton of space and could just basically stand around and shoot people. Tracer on Tracer, around the back of the point, this is very typical. The big thing there is that uh, Mikey got given a Orbal Harmony, which basically wins it instantly for Mikey. Davin has to disengage. Support ultimate's being used. Now the dive is looking better finally. I thought so. Big Goose. I think Big Goose here gets the fucking money shot. Because Sound Barrier goes off. They use, um... France to keep things going, and then a boop goes in and knocks the Winston off, and the Lucio. So I think it was a double kill for Big Goose there. They just basically won the fight, and that's just bad position for Cloud9, like, they got pushed into a position where that can happen, and... I don't know, that just, that felt sloppy. Surely there's better places to sort of pull back than standing on a dangerous, precarious bridge. Good pulse bomb. That now this push is done. They cannot push properly without Nevix. It's like ten percent just instantly won the back of that pulse bomb. See, this this is also like you know the question. Then you should have is like, how do you stop this happening? Well, a you wait for Mercy to get buffed, and then Mercy will fix this. Like Mercy will make this sort of thing, uh, and this is why Mercy buff is so powerful. It'll make this sort of thing way, way weaker. The second thing is Nevix is quite far forward and isn't in range of his D.Va. If he was in range of the D.Va, like, that was a telegraphed as fuck boss bomb, right? You see a traitor, like, blink twice into your soldier's M6, you know what she's going for. And so Nevix might have been a bit out of position there as well. But the Mercy change will absolutely change that. And this is why I think Mercy is going to be mandatory. Because it will stop shit like this happening where Gigante just won a team fight by killing one person with a single ultimate. And it was an instant win. This is also a nice call from Giganti. Like, they, they've been playing intelligently enough to know that this is now a winning moment for Linksa to get in, cause some pressure. Maybe Linksa even gets a support ultimate out, that means it's a support Like, if a support ultimate was there, Giganti would have to, uh, sorry, Cloud9 would have to commit it to be able to take that team fight. Unfortunately, Linksa is kind of on his own here. That, and I really don't like that dash. I really don't like that dash at all. He gets one. Forced to deflect the visor. Does end up getting him. Mal's has the sort of counter dives, which is pretty strong. Mikey doing Mikey things. Good lad, Mikey. Really getting better on that tracer. Suddenly, Davin's just not doing quite enough. I don't. I think Mikey's just been shitting on him all game, like, or at least all this map. Like Mikey has just been controlling Davin, and so Davin he has his moments, but he's just been penned in. Maybe Cloud Nine are focusing on him. Maybe Gray is putting a Discord orb on him, uh, harmonying Mikey a lot as well, just to make sure that Mikey can beat Davin. Be something like if I could ask the players, that's what I would be asking. Or if I could see where the orb up time was, that's what I'd be looking for. Where are these orbs going? Uh, but it definitely feels like Davin has not had the impact that he usually has here. So Cloud9 managed to flip it again. Diva Bomb traded for um, 
that's huge. The evil one traded for the transcendence. It does get links us, and now literally again, it's all on Mikey's back. Mikey gets a kill. Gray's getting even more kills. And again, you can see, like, this is phenomenal play from Mikey. This is absolutely phenomenal play from Mikey. And it's not like he's doing anything technically clever. It's not like he's doing anything complicated or anything particularly shocking. He's just outplaying the enemy team. Um, and they're not dealing with him or they're not respecting him. And the dive feels a lot cleaner or the this team play from Mikey, Nevix, and Gray feels a lot better than Davin, Linker, and Shaz, which is strange because this isn't like a, a locked-in roster, right? Like, that's, that's not a locked-in roster. So why is the team play there better? Who knows? He moves and shoots things. He moves and shoots, shoots things very well. But it's an interesting thing, because one of the big issues we had with Mikey on Team UK was getting him to flank more, getting him to be pro proactive um, on the enemy back line. But here he's just killing the front line. Like, here he's just killing the front line, and he's getting away with it, which is probably a sign that Gray is doing a lot as well. Um, probably a sign that Gray is doing a fucking huge amount. And then Nevix is just putting out so much damage on the same target that the, the focus is just better. Okay, King's Row. King's Row, very interesting map. Lots and lots of different ways uh, that... Lots of different ways we're seeing things get played. The Hanzo actually is in vogue on first point, King's Row. The reason why Hanzo is in vogue first point, King's Row, is it's a good point for... Ha uh, it's a good place for Hanzos regardless. There's lots of good angles. He can fire arrows through. It's very easy to just sort of fire through the doorways in the hotel. Uh, lots of good places for sonic arrows. Lots of good places for scatter arrows. And he also basically you run the Hanzo and you would run a Zarya and then you would just go for a Dragon, uh, dragon Surge if you need it, basically. Unfortunately, you wouldn't put your tank player on it, so Malzaz is going to swap probably to Winston. There we go. And we've got a, a Farah without a Mercy and a Dive, basically. So it's like a Farah Dive comp. Farah, again, very, very powerful on this. I actually prefer this to the Hanzo. I, I'm not a big fan of the Hanzo. I think you can take first point with it, but you'll take first point slowly. And you're, again, you're kind of throwing things up in the air. If you're just the better team, you don't need the Hanzo. This is just good target focus. Again, part of why Reinhardt fell out of Vogue. Trying to deal with threats from multiple angles. Like, this feels like a preemptive Reinhardt, where he's like, he's Reggie is playing next patch, not this patch. Because it's just too easy for Nevix, for Mikey as well, if necessary, and Malzaz is just to get on him. And because they're running this with Lucio Zen, they can't maintain the Reinhardt here. If this was uh, like Zen Anna or Lucio Anna or fucking even like Lucio Mercy, they might have enough healing to get away with this. Um, the Anna would have probably worked better, to be honest. Yeah, I'm actually stuck wondering now. Like, if you replace Shaz with an Anna, maybe that works better. I don't know because I like having the double support on uh, double support alt on defense. It gives you, like, a, a lot of extra safety. But you do have the Soldier 76 to pair it up with. It will mean that Fraggy is just way more durable. Because if he gets focused, you throw a heal grenade on him and you just slam healing into him. And Nevix is getting shit done here. I definitely don't think you run these three and Zen Lucio. I just don't see the healing being enough. So now the pressure is mounting. Nevix is looking for good angles. Maybe you can find some. Like I said, Nevix is a really big hero pool. Like, this is not surprising to see out Nevix. We've seen him play Soldier, Genji, and now Farah, all in one series so far. This guy has a huge hero pool. He's also a pretty fucking good Widow as well. Um, he has a respectable Widowmaker. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. They're just lacking kill pressure. Again, this, this is sort of Mikey's weakness. Like, why is Mikey here? Like, what, what, is, what is a Tracer who's bouncing around in this area actually doing when all the enemy team is sort of bundled up back here? Tracer should be looking for something else to do. Uh, putting pressure on the Zenyatta, maybe. Putting pressure, like, flanking all the way around or flanking around this way. Should be looking for a better angle than going in from the front. And this is sort of Mikey's one issue. Is he... When he's sort of falling back to a default behavior, he will fall back to this kind of behavior, where he's just in front of the enemy team, shooting at them. And, like, this feels unnecessary. Like, th there's no way that a Tracer does anything at this instance. So then he's forced to back away. He's forced to uh, recall. 
Zappers has built up enough charge that he can start killing stuff. They commit support alts to this. Okay, fair enough. Cloud9 stop committing resources. They back up, regroup. It's good, 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 good. Mikey just needs to get out. Mikey dies. That's bad. And okay, they're just going to regroup, set up for the next push. They have two support ultimates coming online. Gigante only have one. It's okay. Nice isolation of the Zarya. Nice bursting of the Zarya as well. It's a bit of a shame the bubble didn't come up a little early, but honestly, probably worthwhile. Like the Zarya dying is huge. Cloud9 can afford to take the time here. Like, Cloud9 should know that they almost have these ults online. Linksa commits a touch earlier than Giganti would hope, and that's going to be that. But Cloud9, again, they can let this go. They can afford to let this happen. Like, this is no big deal. This is MBD. Nebic swapping up, it's okay. Good time to do it. If there was any ever a good time to do it, now is the time. So now Cloud9 can go in with two support ultimates. Like, Cloud9 should not have an issue here. They should just... Ooh, don't like that trance at all. Oh no, 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 no. That was wrong. That was so wrong. Okay. So... Ladies and gents, uh, it's, it's very, very easy to see what happens here. It's very, very easy. It's actually completely fucking obvious. Um, so Cloud9 have a choice, right? They can engage... Engage... With... Uh, sound Barrier. Or they can engage with Trance. Okay? The advantage of engaging with Transcendence is Transcendence is very... Like, you can't overwhelm transcendence very easily transcendence gives you this this area that you can just fight in and 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 you don't really give a shit what the enemy team does to you it takes way more than like these guys really have like tracer can maybe do it a uh, soldier rocket at the perfect time if it lands directly might be able to do it but bursting through transcendence is extremely difficult transcendence makes you fucking unstoppable the problem with transcendence is it's confined to a single area it's it's sort of confined so, Transcendence is really good if you are just going to stand on the point and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. Like, if they're a running soldier, um, well, they have a soldier, so sure, but if they weren't running the Tracer Genji and Winston, Trance would have been a great start here, because you just roll, roll to the point, stand on the point, and say, hey, fight us, and the enemy team can't fight you, so you win. Sound Barrier is good because once the Sound Barrier is on everyone, they can move where they like. The problem with Sound Barrier is it wears off very quickly, and if people just DPS the targets, they die extremely quickly. What ends up happening here is sort of a cross-purposes. Cloud9 engage, and they use the Transcendence. Then Nevix and Mikey go super deep dive into the backline, and by the time that Grey gets to the backline, Trance has already worn off. And so their plan as such that I can see it, was basically we'll engage super hard, dive their supports as f like, we'll dive balls deep on their supports, and then we'll kill their supports. Unfortunately, Giganti just back up, Zen scrambles to catch up with, uh, Zen like ults really early, then scrambles to catch up to where Nevix and Mikey might be going, and then they all just die. And that it, it, it's literally that simple. If they sound barrier and did that, then maybe that would have worked better because Nevix is always going to get ahead of the team. And so you have that extra reach that sound barrier gives you. And then if necessary, you can send the Zenyada in to follow the Genji. Just standing up his bug in the hand out of me, it's actually better. Um, ideally, I would stand when I cast. It is more natural to stand and talk. It's a beautiful grab. Beautiful bomb. Big bang. Like this is a, a bit of a ballsy grab because there was a Genji there and he had deflect, so that could have gone very badly. I just I want to try and see the full like sequence of events. He probably he read where Nevix was going. He knew that Nevix wasn't going to catch that. It's a beautiful grab. It's a beautiful wombo. Very easy, clean. The nice thing about this, though, is it's given Giganti time to get both the support ultimates back online. So now, 
Now Cloud9 are in trouble. Now Cloud9 are in a lot of fucking trouble, because they haven't seen Shaz use an ult yet, Big Goose use an ult for a while. Uh, they've seen them use ults, but they haven't seen them use them for a while. So they know that their time, the window opportunity is sort of run out. And then there's a pause. And there's a pause for ages, if I remember right. Okay. So, game resumes. Uh, here we go. What's nice about pauses is at least it gives the teams time to sort of have a tactical appraisal and see what's going on. Still running the triple DPS as well. Not running the hand zone. Neptuno no kills Fraggy. What the fuck happened to you, Fraggy? Fraggy, what are you... Fraggy jumps into the back alley and then dies. This... Okay, he's got Primal Rage, but I want to... Like, this is a triple DPS comp and your D.Va is not there to protect you. Look how quickly he dies. This is a thousand hit points. So everyone just peels back and kills Fraggy. Okay, step one done. We, got, we have a pick. We can now push out. Lynx is even being forced to reposition. Now they're just going to try and find targets to, to pick off one by one. Grey gets a huge pick on Lynxer. That's a, a massive ultimate that's not going to be a part of this fight. And suddenly these support ultimates are, are kind of irrelevant because Shaz, like, he can ult now, but it's... It, it's struggling. It's real str really struggling. Neptuno goes down there before he gets an ult off. What is this fucking clown car of a team fight? This is one of the weaknesses of Tac Visor, is that Winston alone can counter it. Raggy a bit of a monster, and then this is a moment that I found fucking amazing. And this is where you really start to see the coordination start coming out, I think, from Mikey and from Nevix. So the phone box, made of sturdy stuff, manages to save Mikey and um, Mao from the Diva Bomb. Grey comes back in on the Doomfist, instantly gets deleted. Now, Grey has swapped off Zenyada onto Doomfist to try and buy some time. Watch Mikey, just watch Mikey. Just duking, keeping the point alive as well, just tapping the point using the, the box here. Suddenly space gets in, gets a little bit of space, and suddenly, Nevix is now with them. So they spot out that Big Goose is out of position a little bit, but then Nevix finds the backline, spots out Shaz, is alone. Nevix confirms to kill on Shaz, Mikey keeps the point alive. And you just see them sort of flexing onto each other. Target focus looks good, now suddenly Winston's on his own, on the point. They can just take the time. Malzaz is back, clean up, Zappis is coming in, this is now already finished. But it was just, like, this was where I was super fucking impressed, because it's like, the target focus seems really, really good. So while all this is happening, Nevix has made the decision to sort of push in this way, I think, is what's happened. Gets onto Linkser, kills Linkser, and calls that Shaz is on his own. There's two people contesting the point, so they don't need Mikey, so Nevix and Mikey are now free to get rid of Shaz. Killing a Zenyada, especially in an instance like this, like if Shaz just stays here and shoots onto the point and supports and discords, that's enormous. So isolating and killing this, great. Mikey peels back, knowing that Nevix is, is more than capable of finishing off that kill. And then suddenly, that synergy just starts really clicking. And it's really, really nicely done. Grey on the Doomfist. What are you doing? You kooky support man. And punches off into the distance to go and swap into the humble Omnic instead of the, the global terrorist organization leader. Okay. Any other change out? Space moving off the Soldier 76 instead of going on to the Zarya. It's an interesting choice, Mao swapping onto the Reinhardt. Nevix staying on the Genji, be interesting to see if that changes onto a Soldier 76 after he's used this Dragon Blade, or if he decides to stick with it. The, the one scary thing here is that it's Fraggy versus Mao, and like, Fraggy is a fucking legend, so it's always going to be scary. So an okay Pulse Bomb, doesn't really get anything unfortunately, but... Spirit was there. Zappis has used his bubbles, getting focused down, gets drilled down. Again, target focus. Like, the way you beat Zarya's is you try and bait the, the bubbles. Once the bubble is gone, Nevix and Mikey both just drill this high energy Zarya. 
Dead. Okay. Done. Nevix commits very aggressively on very low hit points and gets fucking hell. Oh. Shit that should not happen. You get team wiped by a Genji on like 100 hit points. Linkster does a good job of getting some damage onto him. Doesn't quite get enough. Nevix just like slaps him on the bum with the dragon blade as he goes past. Takes him down and that is a fucking walloping of a team fight. Okay, but if I remember right, this 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 isn't all sunshine and rainbows. This is actually nice to see out of Nevix. I'd like to see Mikey here as well. Um, in my mind, if you're playing dive, like the way I think of it is this: the enemy team has a certain amount of time, right? They take to get from spawn to the objective. Okay, and during all this time, they're literally three man pushing this. So any t and basically, you got to consider this, right? The Reinhardt is moving at a speed of X. Okay, the Reinhardt moves at speed X. Let's say that when he puts his shield up, he moves at half X. Well, if you're a Genji and you're just peppering this Reinhardt and you got a Genji and Tracer just annoying the shit out of this Rhine, this Reinhardt is being forced to move at half X. He's not being moving at X. So the idea is that if you have Tracer, uh, Genji, and like Gray even advancing forward a little bit just to put orbs on these guys and Discord targets, they can just start cleaning this shit up. They could even do it with Neptuna as well, just have a speed boost there for, to get these guys out when they need to. But the idea is you're trying to slow down their rollout. Because the longer it takes for them to roll out, the more ground you can take. And there's still probably going to be a fight, but A, you're building ultimate charge. B, you're putting pressure on them. And C, Mikey can very, like, Genji Tracer can very easily still kill someone. This is where the target call has to be fucking perfect. This is a good opportunity for Nevix and Mikey to get onto. Like, the important thing to note here is there is no D.Va. Shaz should be a target of super high pressure. Big Goose commits with the barrier though and before anyone takes initiative on Cloud9. Davin's already killed everyone. That's a huge waste. My question is, where was Mikey? Mikey, what were you doing? You've been doing so well. Mikey's over here for some reason. Like, during all this time, this is where, you know, communication could be a big issue. Mikey needs to be, well, Nevix needs to be calling for Mikey, and Mikey needs to be making his way, like, to set up around here, for example. And then they can both engage super hard onto the Zenyada. Instead, Clown, uh, Giganti take all the initiative. So they start contesting, Big Goose commits. And during all this time, then, just dead. The Cloud9, like, they, they play, they're playing dive, but they play dive passively. And the second they start playing dive passively, it goes wrong, right? You, you gotta play the... You gotta play your comp. You can't just play non-comp. Mikey desperately tries to get out, gets hunted down and killed. Feels bad, man. Honestly, Cloud9 should not wait for Mikey. Good. They should roll out, because Mikey can catch up super easy. Two support ultimates to one support ultimate. Key here is to not panic. Lynx is in a really nice position, but can be dived. Mevix dives him. Good job. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, it's time to go aggressive. This is unfortunate. Really unfortunate. And the fact that Fraggy gets the kill there was... Ugh. Ooh. Space gets a grab, but it's not good enough. Oh god, this team fight was a bit of a clusterfuck. Like, it all goes super well because this pick is huge. This pick is absolutely huge. And then Fraggy is a monster. Like, I think Mikey might have been better just sticking on Zappis. Either that or, no, Nevix dies. Nevix dies. I'm guessing Nevix eats a f shitload of damage from a Zenyatta. Yeah, that's, that's a Zenyatta chunk if I've ever seen one. Maybe a fire strike, I don't know. Unfortunately, Nevix eats a shitload of damage, gets taken out by the supports. Which is a shame, because if Nevix was here to finish up Zappis, this team fight would have gone completely fucking different. Uh, the Transcendence saves Fraggy here. And unfortunately, the Transcendence is too late to save Malzaza. So down he goes. Feels bad. Sound Barrier comes out from Neptuno, but it's honestly too little too late. There's too many people dead already. And while the Graviton Surge comes through, there's no real DPS left except Mikey, who's just got Pulse Pistols. And Mikey, bless him again, hero of our story, hero of this match. Just, like, imagine 
Like, I feel so bad for Mikey at this point. He's being fucking hunted to the ends of the earth. Nevix goes in with a very bold dragon blade. Beautiful earth shadow coming out of Malzazer as well, just to try and clean stuff up. And Nevix, I think, maybe a touch early with the dragon blade. Rekka gets back on the point. Reinforcement distance is now closer for Cloud9, so Cloud9 are reinforcing a little bit better. Mikey does a good job getting on Shaz. Unfortunately, gets caught in the graph, manages to survive. Just look at this fucking tracer trying to harsh out. Look at. I just I feel so bad for Mikey here. He's on like 10 hit points. He's got four people to fight. He's trying to keep it alive. He's making sure that Cloud9 are not Cloud9 in. Now, like 50 hit points. Hunted down by three people. Linksa finally lands a fucking shot and down he goes. Oh! Oh! Hurts. Still, lack of refinement. Lack of refinement is how it feels. There's also a good job by Shas uh, and Big Goose to uh, deal with Nevix when they did, because Nevix going down early in that team fight. If Nevix could Dragon Blade during the original team fight, they would have probably been able to win that. So, good job by them. Poor job, good job by Nevix as well for killing Lynx. And so it's kind of back and forth. Like this is, was a very even match, where people were doing pretty good things throughout. Let's see. Spenny more. Spenny more cloth, yes. Oh. Ah, uh, Mondata. Oh, bless. Okay. Right to see Cloud9 uh, defend. Right to see Gigante come out. They are not going to run the May. Although Linksa was actually. Linksa was one of the first people to be an advocate of May on defense. It's important to have a uh, defensive May on King's Row. He used to be Linksa's jam. Ages ago. Ages ago. He was one of the first to do it. Okay, running the Hanzo, like I said before, Hanzo can get a lot of picks, can get a lot of work done, um, like it's very very easy to just find angles to get some damage done, like you see Malzaza took a shitload of damage from a scatter there, uh, easy to find angles, like through here you just start pinging arrows through, you're probably going to get someone, you start pinging arrows from this way, you can get up here and start pinging arrows down, and then if it all goes fucking wrong, you have uh, Graviton Surge, you have Dragon Strike, and you just, and even, you generally get a dragon before you get the grab as well, you can just fire a dragon through here, and then move on to the point, and then second dragon, you can probably just use it with the uh, Dragon Surge. Otherwise, you know, it stops Soldier standing up here, for example, because if Hanzo shoots anywhere in that fucking window, the Soldier dies, um, because it's Hanzo. So, yeah, it, it really does limit some of the stuff that uh, the Hanzo can do. Unfortunately, Lynx is getting pushed back, and nice for Cloud9 is that they are playing, like, aggressively, and they're pushing on this. Unfortunately, for Cloud9, Hanzo does that to Tracers. Hanzo versus Tracer is honestly at the highest level. Generally, like, a Hanzo-favored matchup, it's actually pretty fucking good for the Hanzo. Nevik's doing a good job trying to duke, but honestly, losing Mikey on the ground loses them a shitload of pressure, and even Davin was now going up to displace uh, Nevix. There's no more pressure, they can just move on to the point and take it. They don't even need to worry about the Dragon Strike. They can keep it, because Dragon Strike is still good on phase 2, so it has a okay transition. It's just, he's probably going to use this uh, Dragon Strike, maybe he might even keep it for the Dragon Surge, and then swap. Maybe onto a Genji, maybe onto a Soldier. So let's see. Cloud9 holding very aggressively. It's kind of an interesting hold. I think if I remember right, this hold goes very badly for them. As Malzaza drops his barrier and there's a Hanzo. And they don't respect that. And so the Hanzo gets a scatter, does a shit ton of burst damage. Once the Reinhardt is down, Fraggy is now open. Easiest kills of Lynx's life. Cloud9 reacts slowly. Trance this, even though they're already two down. Nevix eats an arrow to the face. Hanzo thing, Scapper. Kills Batman, and then this fight is done. Very strange hold, I'd say, from Cloud9. Like, I do not like... Like, to me, okay. To me, the important thing about this is... You shouldn't use these ultimates. You shouldn't use these two support ults. Like, they should not be used. Why shouldn't they be used? Because any kill you get here, any team fight you win here, the enemy team is just reinforcing into it super quickly. 
Um, winning team fights here is very, very low prior. Like, if Gigante can commit everything, then sure, you can maybe use, you know, a transcendence. But honestly, let Gigante commit shit here. Because if you're holding this close, you're holding so close that you might even be able to get three fights out of this phase instead of just the usual two. Like, King's Row point two is shaped like, um, it goes like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this for the payload path, right? And then you got the end here. You know, there's like the roads all around here, and there's a building here. Um, or it's more like here, uh, and then you got the pub here and whatever. The bookstore is over here. So the payload snakes its way through here. Okay, and you usually have two fights in this phase. The first one is usually around here, and the bookstore corner, and the last one is right in front of the point. And this is true for a lot of second points. This is how a lot of second points work. And so you're basically trying to set up so that the enemy team spends a shitload in getting this fight and you want to spend very little, and then the enemy team spends a shitload trying to, like, hasn't got anything left in the tank to take this point, and so you can then have the stable economy up here. If you're going to hold, like, here, you've got to be trying to hold here by making sure that your economy is coming out of it healthy. Like, every single time you take a step back here on the defense, your economy needs to be getting healthier and healthier and healthier. If you are spending resources to hold in these locations, and the enemy team is spending the same resources, it honestly works out better for them. Because you're spending shit, and they go, okay, well, we'll spend maybe one thing, and then they push forward. And then they, you both spend one thing, one thing, and then let's say you're fighting here, well, their reinforced distance is better anyway. So then you both spend the same, but they win the fight, or they come back from the next fight a bit stronger, and so they win that, and then you've got nothing left for this one. So it's, you've got to be so fucking careful, I think, spending resources here. Why I'm glad to, and like... You know, the Ice Shadow's already done, mates, and you got a hands over fucking shelling at people. It just, it feels like a bit of a panicked reaction of, oh god, we, we have to do this now, when it's more like, you guys are playing for time at this point, die on the payload, slow it down as much as possible, and then try and keep pressure and momentum. Lynx is going to run forward and probably just try and slow them down with a Dragon Strike through the doorway, makes it harder for them to, to maintain any push, and so it's going to be harder for them to get the three fights that they maybe are looking for as well. Oh, and also slows down the Reinhardt, because Reinhardt will have to put his barrier up or risk getting picked. The grab is good. Sound barrier is good. It's going to block a lot of this damage. Pulse Bomb goes in on the back of it, though. This is very good by Gigante. Like, they know they have the resources they need to win these fights, and so they're just, they're just doing textbook fight wins. And that's that. Now he's literally that. Gigante just had the, the world's easiest team fight. Like, the, the sound barrier is not going to stop all of this. They just. The grab is good. The sound barrier is okay to counter it. It'll stop maybe the Dragon Strikes damage, but it's not going to stop the Pulse Bomb on top of it, and that's that. Easy. Easy, 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 easy. And clean. Is this Nevix ulting with like 100 hit points? Literally, I think he literally dropped down to one hit point there. Yeah, he was one hit point for a second. If I push forward on this... Like, just, just watch the health bar. Watch the health bar. Holy shit. Engages on 120. It's a good first slash, gets Big Goose, slaps, links her on the bum, one hit point a second ago. And back up to six. Oh! It's a very dead Devon. And there you go. And now they go to the desk for like half an hour. And on to Assault. Okay then. Let's see. I like this offensive team lineup coming out of Cloud9. Actually, I don't. I would like this offensive team lineup coming out of Cloud9 if... What? You see, I like the attacking Reaper on first point Voskaya. A lot of teams play around the the right hand room, and honestly, you basically you figure out where the enemy is holding, and then you just run into them and kill them. There we go. 
The problem is you don't do that on one support. You don't put Mao Zaza on fucking Genji. I'm playing the Ana instead of the Zen, just to hope to not to get picked off by Shares. Otherwise, typical as typical can be. Let's see. So, again, they've got to be careful not to poke too much. They're just going to advance forward. Try and make sure that Sombra doesn't get too much. Sombra tries to poke. Your grenade comes down. It's a bit of an early fight here, but Cloud9 get into a good position. Okay, now it's time to muscle out the room. Okay, they can start pushing forward. Looks like Giganti are not going to contest this room. This is actually really weird from Giganti. This is really weird from Giganti. The target focus has to be perfect from Cloud9. If it's not, they're going to have problems. Why, well, Mikey, why are you following Winston around? Like, th this is why Mikey can't do this. This is... It works out, but holy shit, that felt wasteful. So... The reason why I don't think Mikey can afford to do this is like, he sees that the Winston's on half hit points, but the problem that he's facing is that this is not... Like, Zenyata healing. This is not Mercy healing. This isn't even Ana healing. This is Sombra healing. Sombra healing is fucking instantaneous. Um, so if Raggy survives for a while, then he jumps in, and he's like instantly back to a shitload of hit points. The problem is he jumps into the entire fucking team, and Linkser ends up getting picked off as well, so now everyone just fucking shoots Fraggy, and there's not enough defense matrix in the world to stop him just dying. I don't know, it feels like Mikey could have done something a bit different there. Instead of just staying on the Winston. It's just, this This is very strange out of Giganti, like this feels... ...disorganized. I don't know what their plan is here. Because they, they've, like, Sombra's very recently hacked the health pack in there. Okay, fair enough, whatever. So Sombra's hacked the health pack in there, she's probably got the health pack hacked here. What health pack are, are Cloud9 playing around? What, what health pack are they using to fight? How are they, fight, how are they setting up to fight? The, the point with Sombra is that you can just keep a fight going and going and going and going and going. You get EMP super quickly if you just fight on top of the health pack, and then you win. But Giganti just fall back from the health packs that they have, don't use them appropriately, and get punished for it. It's super fucking hard. Linksa just gets picked off before he can even reach a health pack, dies. Fraggy gets to a health pack, Shaz gets EMP, but Fraggy just dies for it as well. Because they just let them take control of where the health packs are. Very, very strange. Very, very fucking strange. And then, yeah, that, that this point is done. Okay then. So they're going to save EMP for point two. Like, they didn't even show any token resistance to taking that room, which is the weird part to me. Like, just, they gave their Sombra nothing, they gave Shaz nothing to work with. As such, Shaz didn't get EMP by the time the first fight was over. This is nice from Mikey. <laughs> we almost fucked it up, but still. I appreciate the attempt. I appreciate the attempt, I appreciate the threat of putting pressure from the angle. I like the fact that he held on there as well. That was actually really nice. This is actually a nice little move. He jumps forward from Fraggy. You can see instantly the D.Va reacts, goes, Ooh, there's a pulse bomb! Puts the defense matrix up. Mikey just holds on, backs away. EMP goes off. Counter engage goes super hard. Oh, no. Sleeve dart's good. Davin almost dies. He's going to be back in this room. It's cut down. I think Cloud9 fought a bit too hard there. Maybe. Uh, the EMP goes down. They, they're they not in too bad of a position at first. Space didn't get hit by it, I think, so he's just defense matrixing a shitload of damage, but the second that runs out, like the second Mazaz is down, you, and the, especially once the mech is gone, you just die at this point. Like, you stop dealing damage to the enemy team, you stop giving Sombra any chance of getting back into things, and then you just die, reset, go for the next one. Okay, let's see. So what I would like to see from Cloud9 is a very, very decisive push here. 
I would definitely like to see Neptuno go relatively early with an ultimate as well. He needs to use it aggressively. Just because we know that Sombra used the ult. Like, it wasn't a huge fight that happened, and Sombra used the ult. Uh, you know, it wasn't like a fight that dragged on and on and on and on. So the chance of having Sombra having EMP are limited. But once the Sombra train starts, you know, the Sombra train don't stop. The Sombra train has no breaks. And Neptuno, the danger that I see very, very regularly with Lucio's is that... Um, they, they basically never use their sound barrier because they're always afraid of getting it EMP'd. And so when there's a window, I like to see Lucio's try and take it as aggressively as possible. Instead, Giganti do something a bit different. They go super aggro. Like, honestly, I think... Yeah, I, I'm honestly okay with the sound barrier. I'm okay with the sound barrier being used. Because Giganti jumped out, they played aggressive, Cloud9 uses Sound Barrier, counter engages. Because that aggression, that jump out from Giganti signifies that they don't have, like, they don't think that they can just sit back and play a defensive fight, right? If they sit back and play a defensive fight, they're going to lose stuff, so they have to counter dive to try and get onto Cloud9's backline and try and force them to use some stuff early. You, you, it's not a case of, like, falling for falling, uh, using some stuff early, it's more a case of, like, you are just going to spring back that much harder. There's actually some military wisdom. Which is the way that you beat an ambush, is you immediately start fighting as hard as you can. Like, the, the best way to beat any kind of ambush is you just immediately go fucking from 0 to 100 instantaneously. Because ambushes, are by definition, they rely on having like a weaker force overpowering a... Not necessarily a weaker force, but usually you are relying on that element of surprise to give you enough of an advantage to win. So if you are being ambushed, it's actually, in a weird way, a sign of weakness or a sign that the enemy t the enemy might not have enough resources. So if you go really hard against the ambush, you can actually just kill it straight away. Uh, now this is where the um, the Sombra party has begun. Nevix has swapped onto Doomfist, probably as an answer to the Sombra. The Pulse Bomb already ends the fight. Cloud9 desperately trying to back up. Giganti... Going full aggro here, I like the fact that Cloud9 is just bending back, trying to get a pick, trying to get a kill, they get a kill. It's pretty good. It's okay, Shaz now has to be a little bit careful, Shaz has to consider committing the EMP, he commits the EMP, Nevix is there. Nevix gets killed, was Nevix hacked? Nevix wasn't hacked, Nevix, Nevix, come on, you weren't hacked, friend. Doesn't seem to react to the Sombra, which is unfortunate. Maybe he'd already, maybe his punch is on cooldown, his ability is on cooldown because he's getting back as quickly as possible. It's still not bad for Cloud9. Like, that was an EMP that was more for stalling than anything. They don't have anything to really super hard engage with because Linkser was dead. Zap is demaxed. It's looking good for Cloud9. Sound Barrier actually manages to get off as well, which is always a f huge fucking boon. Linkser, can you carry? It looks like Linkser and Davin can. Uh, a valiant effort. Oh my god! What? The damage he's just taken. What's Lynx's health? 200, 200, 200, 95? 5? Manages to pick up the health pack. Imagine he picked up the health pack and he thought the same as me, which is like, oh, well, I'm a Genji, that's a Lucio, I just picked up a health pack, I should be fine. And he walks forward and Neptuno just fucking destroys him. Holy shit. Holy shit, that was very nicely done by Neptuno. Neptuno actually really fucking saved their bacon there. Well done, Neptuno. Neptuno, you're a beast! Some beautiful play in Voskaya. Just, the damage coming out of the Lucio is huge. Uh, Grey swapping off the Zenyada onto the Salty 76 to try and uh, reinforce as quickly as possible and try and get, you know, some extra pressure on the point. Just because Zenyada has such a slow rollout. T5 still a bit of a clusterfuck. Sombra going to be coming back in pretty soon, though. Neptuno gets another barrier off as well. And C9 are actually doing it. I'm going to put that one on fucking Neptuno's shoulders, to be honest. Oh, Shaz is trying. EMPs. 2CP, boys. It's time for 2CP. Oh no, Big Goose is coming back. Zappis isn't dead just yet. There we go, Diva runs her over. Or oh, actually, Mikey runs her over. Now he's setting up for the kills, gets focused down, gets killed. This is the danger of Doomfist at high levels, is that people just fucking kill him. And Giganti barely hold on, holy shit. This is done, guys. 
Regroup, Mikey, get out of there. Like, they're not going to be able to do win this by dribbling onto the point without having a Zenyatta either. The question is, does Gray use this visor? Ooh. Ooh. Does Gray actually use this visor? I mean, they're coming in with a shitload of ultimates here. The, the spanner in the works is that, you know, Big Goose is going to be ready to go, but Nevix is not going to be too useful, I fear. They only need a third, Cloud9. Davin spotted out Nevix. This is not good for Nevix. Mikey spotting out Davin. This is dangerous for Mikey, though, because Davin has so many health packs he should be able to run to and pick up. Links are commits. They use Sound Barrier. Uh, is a like Sound Barrier, and Dragon Blade is a response to Grey using his ultimate. Grey hopefully will swap at this point. No EMP was used, but Sound Barrier was used. That's pretty good for Cloud9. Grey's back on the Ana. There you go. Okay, this is this is not too bad. This is not terrible. The only issue for Cloud9 is that Giganti have a shitload of stall potential still, because they have the Diva Bomb coming up. So it's going to be very, very difficult for them to actually be able to clear the point reliably, and they have one minute to do stuff. The EMP, of course, always a consistent threat. Almost gets the, the Fatal Punch, unfortunately. This is part of why Doomfist has been picked, to try and sort of stop Sombra just farming and setting up easily, and punishing her if she runs out. Otherwise, it's just getting set up. Managing to punish Zappis pretty heavily. Gets the bomb out early. That's pretty good. Zappis gets a double kill on two supports. That's a nightmare. This fight is done. Let's get out. There you go. How? I smell Fraggy's hand in this. No? No, Fraggy's hand wasn't in this. The Diva Bomb just gets both supports. Okay, 30 seconds. 30 seconds fighting into an EMP. If Neptuno gets hit by this EMP, it's gonna be difficult. Gonna be difficult. So then, Chaz, biding his time, waiting, waiting, waiting. Chaz knows that if he hits the CMP, it's pretty much done. He might be biding his time a little bit too much. There we go. No, he just attacks the Doomfist. Enough to kill Nevix. Diva one goes into a corner. Uh, hmm. Sand Barrier goes off. Chaz has to use this now. There we go. Cancels out the Sand Barrier. And then there we go. Counter Sand Barrier, and this should be an easy hold now. There you go. Um, let's talk about that Diva Bomb from space. I'm not sure I like it. Uh, I don't know. I don't... I'm not a big fan of it. I guess... I imagine space was scared of getting hacked and not being able to use it or something. Uh, or getting hacked and focused and then you can't self-destruct so you might as well just throw it in and try and get something. But throwing, I don't like throwing it into the corner of the point. I think it would have been better if you tried to get it just over this, or through this, um, rather than just putting it in the corner here, because you, you're you not going to clear the point for long enough uh, if you're going like straight from this third to this third. You're not going to be able to clear the point for long enough, right? People are not going to be gone uh, to win you the game outright. So, a bit of a, a Hail Mary. A little bit blech. Blech. Still, it's not too bad. Like, 95.7% 90, is pretty fucking respectable on Volskaya. Lovely scenic shots of Volskaya. Forward, 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 forward. Forward. Okay. Die from both teams, Cloud9 running the Sombra. There we go. Nothing too shocking coming out from either team. Let's see how they're going to hold this. I'm going to start up here. The interesting stunning position because this implies that they might be falling back to a fight underneath. 
Interesting that Gigante are just sort of taking this fight straight up though. Because I can see Cloud9 just using both the health packs behind them and just healing up. Ray's already on 50%. They just brute force their way straight into the front door. You guys have to be very, very careful here. C9 just need to make sure that no one dies, pick up the health packs, get EMP, and then they can just flush these guys out. They even get the DMEC. Uh, that's huge. They cannot really afford to stay in fight in here anymore. Mikey, the god. Sound Barrier gets used offensively already. Sound Barrier used on both sides already. Gray doesn't even need to EMP. What? So, like, the way that Gigante played this just seems completely fucking wrong. Like, first and foremost, I don't mind this. I don't mind this behavior here. Like, jumping in super hard, you've got a dive team, Davin, Linkser, Fraggy, all of them can go target the Lucio. But instead they turn and start targeting the tanks? And so the tanks just fall back. Like, is taking 50% damage. And then he's going to pick up a health pack. And oh look, Gray's just gained 20% ult charge. And they muscle the way in here, just go straight through the front door. Okay. Fine, they take control of this room. And then they engage in this long, slow poke battle. Like Cloud9 do the right thing of just say, okay, you, you want to be in there, you can be in there. Just, just keep tapping us. Just keep keep poking at us because we're going to dive in here at some point and we're just going to pick up this health pack and then Gray's going to EMP and kill you all if you just keep doing this. Zapis ends up getting focused down anyway and killed. Just seems so strange. And then Cloud9 clean up, no problem. And now Gigante are rolling into an EMP and they're going to be rolling into Cloud9 having just ult advantage regardless. Okay. The big question here is can Gigante find like an angle or a pick or something? EMP goes off, Diva Bomb goes in, gets two, this fight is done, get out, get out. Okay, good. That's good because Gray, like, notice that Gray has had no chance to build. Like, Gray has n no bounce back. So the way EMP sometimes works is, like, you EMP, the fight goes on for a while. And if the fight goes on for too long, what ends up happening is, like, the fight ends and everyone's on 50% hit points. And then Neptuno just sits on speed boost. And then everyone just goes and picks up Sombra packs. And then Sombra's on 50, 60%. So it only has to do a tiny bit of building. So there is a big window here right now. Linkster again does an air dash. I don't know why Linkster is doing these air dashes. I mean, he is playing with a Nana, so maybe maybe he was expecting the Nana there, but he, he did it before and I don't like... To me, you air dash. This is an air dash, by the way. That's an air dash. You air dash. It's fine here. Uh, I'm being too critical. It's fine here because Shaz is, exists on the map. You air dash when you have an Ana because it means that the Nana boost is going to go on you. Um, there's no one else next to you. There's no one in the way. It might find its way onto Lucio somehow, but chances are pretty fucking good it's going to go on you. Um, don't air dash if you don't need to otherwise because it's just like a big signal to the enemy team to, oh, shoot that guy. Um, and they then go and shoot that guy. Nevix commits as well, gets Shaz, which is huge because it means there's no nano boost in this fight. Gray can easily hunt down the weakened targets because he's Sombra. That's what Sombra's very good at. Zappis and Davis. Da Zap Zappis and Davis. Zappis and Davin doing some good work. Come on, Mikey, just play around the health packs. Okay, that health pack isn't hacked. That's a bit of a problem. What? Mm Hmm. 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 I'm, I'm literally going to go into chat and just... Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Why? 
Nano Tracer is terrible at the best of times, okay? Nano Tracer... Was it- is, was there a Winston there? Was Fraggy there? Maybe he was aiming for Fraggy? No? No, he's just- He's just putting it on Devin. And oh look! Space just pressed right mouse button and stood on a D.Va health pack and didn't give a shit and now Devin's hacked and now Devin is dead. The bomb's nice. Good attempt. Obviously not too much is going to come of it. Sound barrier. Does actually manage to go off for both sides, so the follow-up kills on the EMP were not great. So there is an opportunity for Gigante here to come in. The distraction tracer did manage to sort of brute force an EMP, I guess. Maybe. Let's 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 say that the, the distraction tracer did that, but Mikey... MGE Mike... The legend. I believe he was a demo man player in TF2. He knows how to put a grenade in the right place at the very least. The pulse bomb goes in. Everyone fucking cuddles up in this small room. Wait for it. Ah, Wales gift to esports, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Adams. Looking fucking fine. There we go. You no, know, let's let's do them credit. Watch the replay. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, two seconds left. Gray is an EMP. Don't fuck this up. I think he might have fucked this up. Gray, no, 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 no. You fucked this up. You 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 fucked up. There was a rush of blood to the head there. There there was a a bit of a, a there was there was a bit of a um. Oh, I, I just need to press Q and we've won this, right? <clears throat> and he presses Q. And he doesn't hit Linksa. And I don't think he hit Zappis. He didn't certainly didn't hit Shaz. Because there's a grenade out. And Fraggy gets a nano boost. Too early. Way too early. Way too early. That, that, no. And, oh look, Gigante has everyone on the point. And a bomb. And the reinforcement di and the reinforcement distance, because this is, Volskaya is fucking enormous. And in the line of sight of the enemy team, you're not getting back on this. And Grey has no alt charge. Gigante can run in here, and Linkster can Dragonblade, and they can just win. Nevix has swapped to Doomfist. I find this questionable. Nevix is being focused. He punches Fraggy. Fraggy punches him back as a huge angry gorilla. Beauty of a pulse bomb from Davin. Links uh, blades. And oh look. Mikey. Mikey's good. He's not that good. Okay. And this, this is, um, this is purely Gray's doing. Gray, Gray, buddy, pal, friend. Just calm down. Just, just calm down at the end of the map. You, you almost had this. Oh, don't Cloud9. Cloud9, please. 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 <laughs> Just stay on it. It's for the love of God. 92% to 96, basically. Okay, Lynx, Nevix, just never leave this point. Nevix, just stay on. Nevix, please. And no, I, just, I know Cloud9 have like a brand now in Overwatch, but please. There's the Nano Blade. It's causing so many problems. Don't worry, guys, you've only got to do this for two more minutes. No big deal, the, the diva bomb's gonna fuck him. Oh god, space, no! Mm. Done. Nevix, Nevix can't hold on. All one single mistake. All grey. 
Okay, not all grey. That's 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 overly harsh, I guess. Like there are opportunities for other people to do stuff, but literally one error. Just a lack of patience here. And yeah, as chat rightfully says, it would be nice if you could see who was EMP on the interface and who isn't. But I think Shaz definitely isn't. So yeah, Shaz is so far back that he doesn't get hit by it. There's no kills off the back of the EMP. Linkser is also free to go in. So Lynxa starts getting kills and starts snowballing, and there's just so much healing coming out of Shaz, and then the Nano Winston just... It's kind of unstoppable. And that's it. And like, if he just waited for... Because Giganti have to get on the point, if he just waited for the, an opportunity to get something on the point, and then EMP it, and like if he just EMPs Fraggy and Fraggy dies, and then they start fucking snowballing, or gets Fraggy and Zappis, and then they just kill them both when they're in a position to kill them both. But it's just that little bit too... too eager. Because it's overtime, and if they win this, and they're 2-1 up in the series, and that's really fucking good, and that's really strong, and they've been doing so well so far, because Giganti have been fucking up their assaults countlessly, but that one bad EMP just... Just fucked him. So badly. There's so much Voskaya. I believe there's so much Voskaya because one of the alternative. I think the alternative is Hanamura. No one likes Hanamura, so... That's where, that's where you see so much of this. Okay, next map. Gibraltar! Fun fact about Watchpoint Gibraltar, originally this flag was going to be a British flag. Because Gibraltar is a British territory. Uh, but the Spanish community manager basically said, uh, Spain isn't too happy about Gibraltar being a British territory and sort of does dispute it in some regards. So, um, you might not want to have the British flag on it. Uh, so they've changed it to an Overwatch flag. Fun fact. Okay, Cloud9. I somehow doubt the the Widow Hanzo combo. The Hanzo isn't atypical. Hanzo, you just run out of spawn, shoot a Sonic Arrow on the side of the wall, like here. So you just shoot a Sonic Arrow here, you see if anyone's up here, and then you can take the Teradoy if you need it. Uh, otherwise, he's going to swap right back to Winston. And there you go. Defensive lineup, dive, nothing too atypical. You sometimes see Widowmakers coming out on this map because Widowmakers are very strong on this map. Lots of good sight lines for her, lots of good opportunities to put pressure on. But team's not opting for that. Malzaz are having a, a good time pushing the payload. He's AFK. He's tweeting. He's just he's he's on Twitter. No issue. This is an interesting uh, defensive position. That is a beauty of a grenade, though. Holy shit! That is Shaz just fucking wins that for his team straight away. Two supports. Andy healed. Winston Diva jumping on them. Davin's even there. Linkser gets in the back. Fucking easy. So easy. Chaz, what a god. Mikey punches back. I mean, he's pretty good. Mikey Nevix proved to be a really fucking good uh, combo. Like, these guys are doing work, but feels too little too late, to be honest. They just need to make sure they don't die. If they die, that's fucking awful. Um, if they don't die and stay alive and hold this territory, they can keep pushing, which is what they're doing now. Nanobusu Winston goes in. They just need to avoid him. It looks like that's what they're doing. The Nanobusu Winston does nothing. Does eventually get grey. It's honestly, it's an okay one kill for a Nanobusu Winston. Not too big of a deal. Zappis demet. Yeah, Mikey's shooting Fraggy, but there's an Anna healing him. Not really going to be able to kill that. And pressure on this Anna would be nice at some point. That would be more up to Nevix and Malzaza. Mikey just needs to get out. Going to get out, pick up the health pack. Just need to be careful here. Like, this this fight is going really sort of bizarrely back and forth. Okay, just, just run. Oh no. You are dead. You are very dead. It feels like Cloud9 could do with just having a little bit of a reset here. Like, hmm. 
If there was a Falklands map, what they call it? If there was a Falklands, they would not. Blizzard would never put in a Falklands map because it's that is way too much of a political hot button. Legally, the territory is British. That is my opinion on it. The people on that island want to be British. They are British. Pressure on the Anna. Anna goes down. Beautiful. Sambro now to engage. The Dragon Blade for the Anna feels worthwhile. If you can get more, that's just a bonus. Does get run over by Zappis. Well, this is going to free Mikey up a lot as well, I think, to do stuff, but no. Links to counter punches with the, gra with the Dragon Blade as well. Not too big of an issue. No support ultimates left on Gigante. This is why the Anna is always a risk. So I'm guessing they nanobladed. Chaz, what did you boost? Chaz has boosted something. Is it the Winston? It might be the Winston. It's the Winston. Okay, fair enough. Linksa goes in with his blade, counter punches. That's enough to win it. Well, that Chinese Taipei. Yeah, Chinese Taipei is like. Chinese Taipei is also Blizzard wanting to be friendly with China. Let me put it that way. They don't want to piss China off, even though everyone was just calling them Taiwan. Like putting Israel as a map or something, Jesus. Yeah, I don't think Israel is... Israel is a complicated issue, let's let's put it that way. I don't want to talk about Israel at the moment. Um, I think Davin just ends this fight pretty much immediately. Like, they just walk into a fucking Winston and Davin just cleans up. What the fuck happens here? Everyone just dies. Oh, grenade. Yep. Another, like, literally the same grenade that killed them the first push kills them this push. <laughs> Ryan, Jesus Christ. Okay. Cloud9, like... These pushes have felt super sloppy. Super sloppy. Like, Shaz is getting these grenades so fucking regularly as well. And, like, the, the die focus just feels completely lacking. Like, they're going in and everyone's just shooting everything. Spa space? Space? Space! Oh, ZP made the same joke. Oh, fuck off, ZP. Steal stealing my jokes. Oh, space, no, 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 friend, you can't, you can't whiff that jump. It's a disaster. Oh, no, Mikey. Mikey, you tried, but the Cloud9 is too strong. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Okay. Oh, watch flags absolutely everywhere. Talon for life, yo. So, Cloud9 in a lot of trouble here. Um, the, there's no polite way of saying it. Oh, look. Oh, wait, no, that's Nevix. Nevix, can you teach Space how to do that jump? He kind of needs the training. But that just felt sloppy by Cloud9. Like, every single time they went in, it's like they just didn't have a focus. It's kind of rough. Opening with the Widow. Link's uh, very proficient on Widow. Back when Widow was meta, he was one of the better ones. Um, and still has that as well. Just looking for sightlines. Like, the fact that Widow is on the map and is it just has a huge impact on how the enemy team defends. It's like Cloud9 want... Basically, I would not be surprised if Cloud9 wanted to take some engages here because they have Grey on the Sombra, right? So you want to have a little bit of a fight. You wanna you wanna have a little bit of a, a ruffle a rough and tussle, you know? You wanna you wanna hit each other a little bit. Because then you go back and you pick up the health packs and you have EMP. Widowmaker's presence means that if you poke out you, you can just die. And so it's like you, you can't do poke battles anymore because Widowmaker's there and she's gonna fucking nail you in the face and that's it. You're done. And so they can't afford to engage until they get to literally here. And they try and ambush the widow, but the thing with widow is that 1v1ing widow at close range isn't that easy. Um, 
So yeah, feels bad, man. Links are looking for his targets. Take your time, lad. There you go. And they're just crashing through him. Jesus. And it's weird, because Lynx are didn't, like, Lynx are hit about two targets there, but he's had a fucking huge impact, and they're about to just win. If, okay, Lynx are, come on, you can hit that shot, lad. You can hit that shot, lad. Uh, he's having a bit of a nightmare, bless him. Okay, now this is a defense matrix, fair enough. But it, it's still causing so many problems for them in terms of how they can position, how they can move, how they can do stuff. They just have no time. Nevix, good tack visor. Oh, there we go, that's what they needed. Oh, feels bad, man. Feels pretty bad, man. Come on, Link, sir. Come on, lad. There you go. Infrasight. There you go. There you go. Shoots the fucking Lucio. Neptuno's on one hit point. Devin can finish it off, surely. No. Oh, I remember this. This was fucking beautiful. Sorry, I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate someone who is doing work. That's why I fucking love playing Widowmaker. Donk. Dead. And then, just for the finisher, spots the Genji out the corner of his eye. Whiffs the shot. Maybe this isn't the moment I'm remembering. Maybe I'm about to be terribly embarrassed. Ah, oh, I thought he got him then. Thought he got him then. He didn't get him. Oh, that hurts. So close. How close? Like, this is a gamble shot as well. There's always a chance that the Genji looks at you and deflects, like when he sees you turning. See, if he was Hanzo, he would have killed him. Because Hanzo doesn't give a fuck, and Hanzo doesn't have to hit the model. Still, they got to do this for two minutes more, and there is a fucking bomb on the point. Thank you, ZP, for repeating what I just said. So that's a bomb that's usually hoping to have the D.Va demacked, and then they're going to bounce, like, they launch out the back and just into a pulse bomb and just die instantaneously, so they can't contest anymore. And... done? Anytime now? There you go. There we go. There you go. A little bit of sass there. Ryan, I am a little bit of sass incarnate. Overall, I'd say there's hope for Cloud9. Like, honestly, with this roster, they could do a lot. Um, the big thing with Cloud9 is they seem to crumble a little bit under pressure. They seem to just, like, when when the pressure cookers getting a bit high, they tend to just explode instead of cooking a delicious meal. Um, and that's not a pressure cooker you want. Let's get away from the food metaphor. Uh, they, they just need to calm down a little bit. They should know the tactics. They should know what to do. They should know how to react to this sort of stuff. And if they just play the game, like, they could have easily won Volskaya. They could have very easily won Volskaya. Then here on Gibraltar, they just seem to do the same thing over and over and over again, get picked over and over and over again. Maybe instead of running the triple DPS, they can run a D.Va instead. I think they're running triple DPS. Uh, or Spain, Spain, Space on the D.Va or on the Soldier? I believe it was on the Soldier instead of on the D.Va. Like, they lost the first push due to a biotic grenade going in, and that should be a signal that, hey, they're running Anna. Maybe it's worth running a D.Va here. Um... The, the diva probably going to benefit them more. Uh, diva, you know, she's going away, so maybe teams are moving away from practicing her. Who knows? Right. Otherwise, it's a very fucking good series. As I, I apparently Bren's face, Bren's smug ass expression, has managed to lock up my Twitch, uh, so I can't actually play past this point. Bren has literally taken over. Um, as I cannot tear myself away from his gaze. Look at this. Look at this smug man. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. So thank you guys for watching anyway. We do these every single Sunday. We're going to go back and do some more of these at some point soon. And there we go. And let's give him a little nose as well. There we go. That's Bren. Um, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me for this anyway. Um, Cloud9. 
Well, Mikey looked good. Mikey Novix had a really good synergy. Gray seemed to be working well with them earlier on as well. It just seemed like the wheels fell off after a while. With enough practice, they could probably do a good job. And I think with a little bit of refinement, they could do really, really well. Giganti have been looking good throughout this season. Um, definitely have a bright future. Um, looking forward to seeing how they do in the upcoming meta as well. So it was a really, really fucking good series between these two teams. Um, looking forward to more out of them both. Uh, next week, don't know what we're going to be covering. Probably more contenders, just because contenders is probably the best. And yeah, send your review to Mikey. I was, I was praising the shit out of Mikey in this. Mikey was doing fucking work. He was doing a lot of work. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching, and I'm going to play some Overwatch now. So yeah, if you're watching the VOD, come watch us live at some point. twitchtv slash esl one amongst many. Fun. Doodles. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, time to play some Overwatch. Ryan.